powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Thursday. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Reisinger. Tonight, a tornado touches down in central Montana. Powerful storms rolled through parts of Montana, including a twister that touched down north of Harlowton around 530. Garfield County Disaster and Emergency Services says that storm struck around 6 o'clock tonight. We don't know if any damage has been caused at this time, but authorities did stop traffic until the storm moved by. Tornado warnings were also issued for areas north of Lewistown and in Muscleshell County. All tornado warnings in the area have now been canceled. All right, Ed McIntosh is in for Bob tonight. And Bob, a lot happening in the Weather Center. That's for sure. All evening long, we had areas of strong and severe storms. Of course, a number of funnel clouds. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the areas that have been impacted and some places that are still being impacted. A lot of wind damage. Uh, area trees and power lines were knocked down in much of central Montana also had those funnel clouds reported. Fortunately, the funnel clouds that we had reports of were pretty much in rural areas. Hail up to about an inch in size in that area around Judith Gap and much of the storms continue to move off into northeastern Montana where you see the pink shaded areas. Those are severe thunderstorm watches still into effect, meaning conditions are right and that gold shaded area. We still have strong to severe storms moving across that area. Take a closer look at the impacts from this in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, the Yellowstone River shifting course as it moves through Billings, taking with it land from a trailer park and a family home. As Q2's David J reports, the family of four is now pleading with the neighbor as they watch their home literally fall into the water. You never know what the Yellowstone is going to do since it's a free-flowing river. The Yellowstone River has changed course and is threatening Joel and Jolene Borg's home. It is very, very scary. <laughs> um, you don't know if your house is going to be there. Part of the house has gone in. That room is our hot tub room, the greenhouse before, basically a dirt floor. And so just the dirt fell into the river along with half of the wall. Before the river took part of the house, it took part of the Borg's land. When we bought the house, it actually has three acres. Right now, we're probably on a little under three quarters of an acre. So we have the rest of it on the other side of the river. They have all the permits in place and just received the plans and the estimate of $270,000 from the engineering firm. And the engineers are telling you that it has to go from that cottonwood tree to that point for it to work. That is correct, at least efficiently. The Borgs would have to pay close to $70,000, and the rest would come from the trailer park owner to fix his land. That could have been taken care of in um, 2015. He had the permit, and he just didn't want to spend the amount to get it fixed. It is very frustrating <laughs> just to know that it could be fixed. It just breaks my heart that we have to deal with this now as it is. The river may be getting closer to the home, but for now the Borgs feel fairly safe, but they do want to get it taken care of before the runoff next spring. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Thanks, David. Now we called the trailer park owner who lives out of state to find out his plans for the land and have not yet heard back from him. A hero's welcome for a Wyoming Korean War vet finally making it home after nearly 70 years. Corporal Demer Dem Demary Marston Kirtley was a native of Casey, Wyoming. Today his remains were flown from Hawaii to Billings then escorted by the Patriot Guard and members of law enforcement back home to Wyoming, where we were told the streets were lined today with people waiting to welcome him back, but it has certainly been a long journey. It currently was reported missing in action in December 1950, last seen in North Korea. His remains were among more than 400 others who could not be identified that North Korea turned over way back in 1954. Finally, in May of 2018, Corporal Kirtley was positively identified from a DNA kit that his late brother, also a Korean War vet, had given more than a decade ago. Only 20 when he died, you know. That he has, and when I read about the horrible war and what he went through, it, it really made me sad that, you know, he didn't die in vain, though. If, it, you know, if his life affects one person, to let us know that, you know, freedom comes at a high price to many, and not just the soldiers, but the family as well. You know, that maybe his life wasn't in vain. Maybe he, maybe, you know, my, my own grandchildren and maybe some of the children along the way will realize that, you know, the, the price we pay for freedom. That a public visitation will be held tomorrow morning from 945 to 1245 at Kane Funeral Home in Sheridan. Corporal Kirtley will then be laid to rest beside his parents in the Casey Cemetery on Saturday.
Ten more Democratic candidates faced off in Miami tonight, including frontrunner former Vice President Joe Biden. Tonight's participants, assigned at random, featured more of the higher polling competitors in a more dynamic debate. CBS's Nicole Killian has the highlights. The matchup in Miami featured career statesmen, women senators, political outsiders, and relative newcomers. Some of the lesser known candidates look to make inroads against the front runner, former Vice President Joe Biden. Joe Biden was right when he said it was time to pass the torch to a new generation of Americans 32 years ago. He's still right today. I'm still holding on to that torch. But a more dramatic moment came when Senator Kamala Harris confronted Biden on the issue of race. Do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then? No, Do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. There were also personal moments, like when South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg expressed anguish over a recent racially charged officer-involved shooting. It's a mess, and we're hurting. And when I look into his mother's eyes, I have to face the fact that nothing that I say will bring him back. The second batch of candidates had the benefit of watching the first night's debate, giving them the chance to see what worked and what fell flat. One tactic, more interrupting. It's part of Joe's generation. And guys, you know what? America does not want to witness a food fight. They want to know how we're going to put food on their table. Yeah. The candidates directed their harshest criticism toward President Trump. We have a president who doesn't believe in the rule of law. Trump is a phony, that Trump is a pathological liar and a racist. A recent CBS News poll in states with early nominating contests found more Democrats think the party should focus on a more progressive agenda. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Miami. And tonight, Governor Steve Bullock hit the airwaves again, but this time for East Coast residents. From the set of WMUR in Manchester, New Hampshire, the governor took part in the station's conversation with the candidate. The hour-long event covered topics from the Supreme Court, health care to veteran suicide. Like yesterday in Des Moines, many questions came from online participants. New Hampshire, though small in the number of delegates, is big on the campaign trail because of its positioning in the primaries and its position as the second caucus right after Iowa. A new study shows many Montanans are following the news closely, but are selective in the sources they actually trust. Released by the Greater Montana Foundation, the study analyzed the way Montanans view their news. The report shows more people are getting their news online than before, but the number of people relying on television news also went up by five percentage points from the last survey four years ago. Now, those surveyed also believe local media is more credible and trustworthy than the national news. Among the people who do share news with other folks, uh, from 43% to 63% who say that they share news with other people to influence them. The report was conducted via uh, mail and email in February and March of this year. Oh, black bear has been gadding about Forsyth the past couple days, causing a little trouble and evading capture until today. Now, the bear had broke into a woman's car and tore up the seats, bounced around town, evading traps, and was finally caught when he went after some trash. Fish, Wildlife, and Parks and the Rosebud County Sheriff's Office were then able to tranquilize and ear tag the 125 bear pound bear for relocation. And here's a photo shared recently by Tracy Baker of Miles City. It shows a rare batch of triplets. Only two of the fawns are visible in this photo, one of which happens to be an albino fawn. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks reminds people even though they can be cute, their best chance of survival is at a safe distance from humans. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news on this PTSD Awareness Day, we're going to look at how millions of people are learning to live again. Plus, while the library helps you get lost in a book, this new installation behind the Bozeman Library will just help you get lost. Then later in sports, see how close this former Montana middle school teacher is to achieving a nationwide goal. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.